of how the Saxon manor of Walden became medieval Chipping Walden and then Saffron Walden can be traced in its archaeological sites, street plan and medieval buildings. The Saxon name is recorded in the Doomsday Book as Waladana and means the Valley of the Britons. In Roman and Saxon times, there was a settlement along the King Slade Valley in the area of Abbey Lane, west of today's town centre. Excavations in the 19th century uncovered a late Saxon cemetery and evidence of people having lived nearby. By the Norman conquest, Walden was a large manor owned by Asgar, one of the most powerful Saxon thanes. I thought I'd start in 1066, which is the date that anybody should know. What you may not know is that there wasn't just one battle, the Battle of Hastings on the south coast, but the English army had already fought a previous battle at Stamford Bridge. Now this was not in London at Chelsea's football ground. This was actually north of York. So the Saxon army had to come through the entire country, then go and fight William. William the Conqueror, Duke of Normandy, won, as we all know, and was crowned in Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day in 1066. Asgar retained his estates after 1066, but William I later confiscated them and gave Asgar's lands to the Norman, Geoffrey de Mandeville. Asgar was imprisoned and died in captivity in France around 1085. In the Doomsday Book of 1086, Walden was valued at £50, with 147 households, including 14 freemen and 20 slaves. Geoffrey de Mandeville was given over 100 manors, not all in Essex, but quite a lot of them in Essex. But it was two generations later that the first Geoffrey de Mandeville's grandson, Geoffrey de Mandeville, Earl of Essex built the castle where I'm standing today. Geoffrey de Mandeville was also a constable of the Tower of London and had a second castle in Pleshy near High Easter in Essex. 1141 is the date in Walden history. It was the date that the castle was being built and it is also the date that the the, a little village became a town. This is because we had a market. It meant that this settlement developed into the major centre of an area of, say, 10 miles around. Everybody came to Walden to sell. Lords liked having markets because it brought them money. The Lord of the Manor had the right to tax anyone who set up a market stall, and he also taxed anything that they sold. The castle was built because in the 1140s, we were in the middle of a civil war. Geoffrey de Mandeville um, built it. It was originally about three stories higher than the one that we can see today. And we're actually standing in the cellars of the castle. In 1141, the Empress Maud granted de Mandeville the right to move the local market from Newport in the Cam Valley to Walden. A bank and ditch around the hilltop enclosed the castle and space for the church and market to the west. Like many barons, Geoffrey exploited the conflict between King Stephen and the Empress Maud. He was later held prisoner by Stephen and most of his lands were confiscated. Geoffrey then went into rebellion in the Fens and set fire to Cambridge. He was fatally wounded in a skirmish at Burwell, Cambridgeshire in 1144. Castles were built for defence. They were built to say, this is my place. And they were probably the only stone building in the entire area. If you look at where the castle is situated, it is on a hill. If you wanted to attack it, you had to come over two streams, 
up a hill. There was another ditch and bank, which was the outer bailey. You then had to come a little bit further, and then there was a further inner bailey, which you also had to go over, quite a big ditch and bank. Then you got to the stone keep. Now, there wasn't a great deal of gunpowder, and so a keep of a castle where everybody would have gone back to would have been able to survive for quite a long time and to survive a siege. To survive a siege, you need two things. Well, you need a lot of luck, but you also need water and you need food. So where we are now is the cellar of the castle. This would have had food stocks in case of siege. And very cleverly, they also had a well in the cellar of the castle. You can go without food for quite a long time. You cannot go without water for very long. And you do not want to be losing men going to get water every time anyone needs a drink. Above the dungeons, there would have been a great hall, just one room. And you can see the shape of the fireplace in the wall behind me. The one room would have been where everyone would have eaten. There would have been trestle tables, maybe a high table where the Lord would have sat. At the end of the meal, those trestle tables would have been taken away and people would have pretty much rolled themselves up in their cloaks and gone to sleep on the floor. Outside the walls, there would have been um, a number of other buildings. There would have been a stables for horses. They, if the Lord of the Manor at the time liked falcons or hunting birds, there may have been somewhere a falconer. If he'd like hunting dogs, there may have been a kennels for dogs. There possibly would have been a blacksmith who would have been in charge of any armour and possibly a farrier who, who may have been attached to the castle to look after the horse's hooves. The castle itself possibly only lasted maybe 15 years. We're not 100% sure. Records disappear from 1314 onwards. The castle is mentioned in various little pieces. It was possibly torn down in about the 1150s, but we're not sure because a couple of hundred years later, there are bills for people to repair it. In 1226, the manor of Walden passed to the de Boons, earls of Essex and Hereford. They remodelled the castle site and laid out a new town with an extensive market south of the hilltop. All of this and more land was enclosed by the Great Ditch, and the surviving part is now known as the Battle Ditches. By 1328, the town was known as Chipping Walden. Chipping meaning market. In the 1800s, we know that there was a barn built inside the castle. And the addition to the castle, um, also of a military nature, was the um, tower behind me. That was put up in the Napoleonic Wars, where it was supposed to be a signalling tower if the French invaded. So you would pull a flag up and hopefully somebody else would be able to see it. It's probably um, a bit better to actually light a beacon because then you can see that further away. Walden took time to develop fully as a market centre, but by the early 1400s it was prospering from the wool and cloth trade and the cultivation of the saffron crocus. Saffron was prized chiefly as a medicine, although also used in dyeing and cooking. The name Saffron Walden is first recorded in the Tudor period. The castle today is um, a Grade One listed building. It is incredibly important to the history of the town, even though from the outside it looks like a funny bit of rock it's actually much more interesting coming inside the castle and it's wonderful that we are once again able to be inside the castle. It's only when you get in that you see these lovely arches, three of them, which were probably storerooms. 
I fondly imagine barrels of beer, or in fact my preference wine, stored in there, and also sacks of grain, so that if there was a siege, you had something to drink, something to eat. Up on the um, wall, you can also see where there was the great fire. Now you can imagine a spit along it and a big fire roaring and either, very often there was a poor boy who had to turn the spit around. You can either imagine half a pig on a big pig roast or lots of chickens. There was also, the well was over about here. We, it has been filled in, unfortunately, but there are descriptions of the well being cut into the chalk. Because we're on chalk, it's relatively easy to cut through. The piece in the middle here, which looks very unusual, was a central pillar that went the entire height of the castle. This was so planks of wood could be put on and to make the floors. There was another floor above, the, the, the Great Hall, maybe with a few chambers, and certainly that was where the lady of the house would have had her private quarters. This bit here would have been all underground. When we were inside, we were underground. This would have been an earth mound, and you would have had to have come into the castle up steps. It's another defensive um, method. You can imagine people fighting their way up to up the steps and before they shut the door on the attackers and the defenders got back into the hall. So if you look at castles like the White Tower in the Tower of London or um, Castle Headingham, they come up, you enter them on the first floor, not on the ground floor. And that was a, a defensive design for castles. If we come along this bit here, we can see some of the way that the castle was buttressed, but again, this was bits holding up uh, the castle, but again, made of the same material uh, as the castle. And then you have a sticky out bit. We think that underneath, we are looking into what was the dungeon. Now, it wouldn't have had any natural light, it would have been a deeply unpleasant place to have been put. And above it was, we think, the chapel. So you could contemplate your sins in the dungeon. Museum's got a lot of evidence about medieval Walden, but most of it you won't see in the galleries because it's boxes and boxes of small pot shards, animal bones, and other things from excavations which we keep in our store. So I'm going to start here at the beginning of our timeline with some pieces of Norman pottery. In 2013, we were lucky enough to um, have Dr. Carenza Lewis from the University of Cambridge to direct an excavation for us and we had an excellent team of six form excavators from Saffron Walden County High and Newport Free Grammar School. They found the line of the original Norman town ditch which went right round the castle hilltop um, encompassing the church and the whole of the castle museum site and the top corner of the common. And right at the end of the dig, in one of the trenches, they found this group of pot shards sitting right at the bottom of the ditch. So they must have been put there um, just after the ditch was dug and before it had silted up. And these were examined by a pottery expert without um, being told anything about the site. And he dated this to about the mid 11th century, no later, about 1140 to 50, which was spot on for the date when we think the castle um, was built. Going back to the 
Abbey Lane site, where we know that the original Saxon settlement was. We have a great deal of pottery and other bits and pieces from the 19th century excavations in that area. It goes up to early 13th century pottery like this, but then it stops. We've got nothing later. And that um, coincides exactly with the date in the early 13th century when we think the, the Bowens replanned the town and they drove this great town boundary, which we call the Battle Ditches today, right through the settlement area. So it was a pretty um, intense act of town planning and must have disrupted a lot of people and went straight through the old settlement and the cemetery site. These pieces um, from the Market Row area, uh, these were excavated by the Essex County Council Field Archaeology Unit in 1984. These photographs are taken in the 1870s and they're from the museum store. Um, they show the excavations off Abbey Lane, uh, just west of the town centre where the land was owned by the Gibson family at the time and they discovered this cemetery which seems to relate to the earliest settlement of Walden, um, the Roman and, and Saxon focus. We think that most of the graves shown were Christian late Saxon period, anything from the 8th to the 11th century. They're all laid out east-west with no grave goods. You can just make out the Edward VI almshouses on Abbey Lane in the background in this one. But there were over 200 graves um, discovered by the um, Gibsons in excavations in the 19th century. And we think most of these belong to the late Saxon period. There was one spectacular find and very unusual. It's this beautiful pendant necklace that's made up of two decorated silver gilt pendants, they've got a little bit of gold in the background. There's a plain silver pendant in the middle and then we've got silver beads, carnelian, rock crystal and coloured glass beads as well. Now this is unusual not only for being in a grave in the Christian period but um, for being very much in the Viking manner of burials um, that are seen elsewhere in the British Isles and in Scandinavia. It seems to be about 10th century in date but the pendants were probably made in East Anglia so we say Anglo-Scandinavian it's the Viking Kingdom of East Anglia by this date and it's possibly um, buried with a woman who was of Anglo-Scandinavian or Viking descent herself and although she may have adopted the Christian God and been buried with her Anglo-Saxon Christian neighbours, she is taking something of her Viking heritage to her grave. Maybe some of these beads were passed down her family. This um, damaged and fragmentary piece of stone sculpture is actually one of the most important items we've got from late medieval Walden and it's a reflection of the wealth of the town by the end of the Middle Ages, the late 15th century. What we have is part of a, a panel from um, St Mary's Church. It's carved in alabaster, very fine stone, and it shows a figure of Christ in majesty. Here he sits with an orb and crown and he would have been surrounded by um, other monarchs, um, by bishops, you can see their mitres, and I'm afraid a headless row of angels here. And it would have probably been um, behind or near the altar in the church, um, a really prestigious piece that spoke of the town's um, wealth. Then, after the Middle Ages came the Tudor period and the Reformation, and we think that that is when this beautiful piece was smashed up. But these fragments were preserved in a niche hidden away in the church and weren't discovered until 1860 during restoration works. Well, we finish our story of medieval Walden by um, going into the Tudor period. It's a charter from early in the reign of Henry VIII, um, 1514, and you can see this beautiful decorated initial here, Henricus, with his name at the top. Also, we have purple saffron crocuses here in the border either side. The first reference that survives in documents to saffron rolled and actually dates from the reign of Elizabeth I, Henry VIII's daughter, rather later in the 16th century. But already by this date, we've got an acknowledgement of the importance of the saffron to the town's identity and economy. Maybe it was already being called Saffron Walden. 
And this particular charter is one of two issued in 1514. And basically it was enabling the townsfolk to take a bit more control of economic affairs by founding a Guild of Holy Trinity, which um, was allowed to run a market and operate mills and keep the proceeds. And they were um, trying to um, rid themselves of some of the rather burdensome taxes which Henry's father, Henry VII, had imposed after he came to the throne in 1485. They succeeded in persuading Henry VIII uh, to let them have a, a guild, but then, of course, the Reformation came, and uh, in 1547, all guilds um, like Holy Trinity um, and their property um, were confiscated, and so that was the end of the Guild of Holy Trinity in Saffron Walden. But, of course, the trade in Saffron and the town's name lived on well after the Middle Ages and the Tudor period. If you are visiting Saffron Walden for the first time, or perhaps you've lived here all your life, you can retrace these ancient steps along the quaint side streets and be greeted in the boutiques and unique little shops that mark the place where medieval stallholders offered their wares. From medieval tussles through to the English Civil War and the birth of democracy, Saffron Walden's story is a rich, an extraordinarily compelling one. Mm -hmm.